Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the co-star of the official newspaper of the Borough of Belmar and the Asbury Park Press on December 13, 2023. A notice of this meeting was posted on the Bolton Board Municipal Building. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, standing for a moment of silence for our troops and first responders. Okay, thank you. First up, we have a workshop. Um, any council people have any items for the workshop before I start? Okay, I, I just have a few things. Um, first, I would like to, you know, thank our fire department. Some of you may know there was a fire in Lacomo. I believe it was last week, and um, they did a great job fighting the fire and, and actually limiting it to the to the one uh, structure. I took a ride afterwards, and you know, I wasn't familiar with the area, but I could see that the homes were fairly close. So it was uh, it was really a, a, a good job confining it to that one piece of property. So thanks again uh, to the fire department and all of our first responders that responded to that, to that fire. Uh, a second thing is, once again, um, DPW did a great job, storm prep and uh, cleaning up after the storm. Uh, I think, uh, thankfully, we didn't get that much snow, so it was kind of manageable, but the freeze afterwards really was uh, a little bit uh, not what we really needed, but thankfully things are warming up. So again, uh, thanks to DPW for for their efforts. Um, two other things you may have seen that on we're having a special meeting on February sixth, just for the purpose of approving a green acres application. Uh, we have to have a hearing according to the, uh, the procedures. So uh, we will have a meeting on that day just to have the hearing and, and approve the uh, application for the Green Acres grant. Uh, and on February 7th, the next evening, we're having a, a town hall meeting with, uh, we've invited all the business owners in town to come and meet with us to talk about uh, the future of the Belmar Business Partnership and uh, whatever else they may want to discuss at that point. Uh, Mr. Kane and I met with some individuals from the BBP last week, and you know it's it's never really been what it was since the pandemic. And uh, the two, the one individual who's kind of been spearheading it, um, Mike Hay, I think it's Hayes. He he sold the tandem in, and he's out of town. So you know. Basically, they need new leadership in order to, to keep that going, if they want to keep that going. So the, the purpose of the town hall was really to just get input from the businesses as to what they want to do, and, and then we will you know, act accordingly. So obviously, the public is also invited to come. So that'll be on February 7th, and I believe it's at 6 o'clock, and it'll be here. Um, and that's all I have for workshop. Anything else? Let us move on then to petitions. I have not received any petitions. Okay. Approval of the minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the December 30th, 2023 minutes? Make the motion. Second. I'm just going to make one little correction. It's actually the December 29th minutes. Just a, just a typo there. <laughs> <coughs> Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bonifesco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Next. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2nd, 2024 meeting? Motion. Second. Okay. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bonifesco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Okay. okay. Reports of Council. Uh, Councilwoman Donovan? Mayor? I feel 
like it's been a while. All right. <laughs> um, a big thank you out to the Belmar Women's Club. They had their um, big fundraiser um, just <coughs> a week ago. They had 229 tickets sold, 207 baskets, which were painstakingly put together by members of <laughs> the Belmar Women's Club. Uh, notably, Carol Capoli uh, were won by attendees, and thousands were raised for education initiatives and scholarships. So, a huge thank you to the Belmar Women's Club. It was a wonderful event. Um, the Environmental Commission, we're happy to say we've moved forward with our Silver Lake team. Uh, we will be meeting soon to go forward. That obviously goes far beyond the geese. We will be discussing uh, different ways to different organizations we can partner with to better Silver Lake um, and how we want to raise money for that. Probably a multi pronged approach. I will be updating accordingly, and I encourage anyone who's <coughs> interested to reach out. Um, we have members of the public and the Environmental Commission on there, and I'm really excited about that moving forward. Um, I can also tell you, I've spoken with Mr. Musso here, that we have officially received the equipment for the lake, um, the, key, the lights and the lasers, and it seems like those will be putting into place weather permitting as soon as possible. So, and again, I encourage people, uh, residents, uh, to report back. My email is cdonovan at belmar.com. Let me know what you think. Happy to hear from you. Um, Tourism Commission, we also have met we are also doing just great. <laughs> we are moving forward with Plants for San Gennaro and the Seafood Festival. Very exciting things coming up with other initiatives that uh, I think are going to be really great for bolstering business in town. Um, and last, Harbor Commission. Uh, I actually had my first Harbor Commission just last week. Very exciting. Council, uh, Council President Levis wasn't there, so he threw me into the deep end. Um, but, and apparently I am the thing that makes a long meeting happen because Sure enough, it went very long, but it was a great meeting. We had a lot of attendees there. Um, and one outcome was that we are looking into revising um, perhaps the definitions of charter versus party vote, just to make it very clear and easier to enforce those rules uh, for the betterment of all. Um, we also talked a bit about um, benches, which I was happy to talk to RBA about. We think we have room, we might be able to make some benches if not in the marina itself, perhaps over in the park. Um, is there anything else we want to? Okay. Um, and that is it. Thank you. Councilwoman Kay. Thank you. Um, oh, over at the Parks and Recreation side, we, um, Mr. Chogu in Recreation told me that the Junior Guards sign up start this Friday. So Junior Guards is going to be launching. We're expected to have a, a big turnout again at Kids Junior Guards. And the Easter Egg Hunt is set for March 16th. The rain date will be March 23rd. And then um, I also met with Mr. Kane, and he let me know that there's going to be big plans to help with improvements for McCleary Park, right? With their, some, some of our grant money is going to go to improving and pickleball. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's going to happen at the special meeting right here, right? So we'll talk about that. But that's going to be coming up soon. Um, at the Shadry Commission, we were able to, at the end of the year last year, purchase six large uh, Japanese lilac trees. It's going to be de de kind of determined where we want to plant those around town and, um, and where we think they will do best. And um, then around the schools, Belmar Elementary School has their daddy-daughter dance this Friday. Spelling Bee is next uh, the February 7th, and the Board of Ed meeting is February 8th. And they also have a 100th day of school fashion show on February 9th. That sounds like a really fun event. Is that a key day event? All I can tell you is that my daughter has stolen one of my husband's shirts and is gluing thingamabobs on it. There need to be 100. And I asked her what a thingamabob was, and she told me, you know, a whatchamacallit. So we're all very interested. <laughs> Alrighty, and then uh, both St. Rose Grammar School and St. Rose High School have Catholic Schools Week all next week. Lots of events planned for both the high school and the grammar school. Um, January 31st next week, there is a Dine to Donate event for the grammar school. If you'd like to eat at Vic's, a portion of your check will be donated back to St. Rose Grammar School. Um, St. Rose High School this past or this coming Saturday they have their Robert Burns dinner, this most, but also hosted by the ground uh, the high school. 
All the money will help support the St. Rose High School pipe bands, Irish food, Irish dancing. You can purchase tickets at stroshighschool.com. And lastly, uh, last night, St. Rose Grammar, uh, rather, the St. Rose Varsity Girls Basketball and Boys Basketball both played Manasquan High School, and both of them won big. <laughs> St. Rose Girls beat the Manasquan Girls by eight, and the Boys Varsity won by 19, which puts them at like 17 and one or something. So try to get to a boys basketball game. It's been really exciting. Um, and then the last thing I want to announce is that the skate park, we are having our first fundraiser coming up March 23rd. It's going to be an all ages event at Salty's and 12 to 6. So it's going to be a day event with bands and we're hoping raffles and prizes and things like that uh, to raise money for the skate park. Two, I will have lots more information about that to come. And so stay tuned for that, but that's, that's really exciting too. And then I would just like to say that um, both uh, or, oh, Councilwoman uh, Donovan, Councilwoman Ronzanero, and myself all went to um, Chief Steve Hudson's retirement dinner this past Saturday, which was also a really, really nice event. Chief Scott was also there. A lot of people attended, and it was just really nice of them to invite us and include us. So really, congratulations to Steve, too. And that's all I have. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Donovan. I mean, Ronzanero. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also wanted to express my gratitude to the uh, Belmar Fire Department, Police Department, EMS, and all of the local responding uh, companies for the heroic response on the fire on 15th. Also, there is a GoFundMe page for the owner of the home, uh, Tracy Julius, uh, who's a well-known member of the Belmar community. So if you'd like to donate to the family during this difficult time, um, you can look up her name on GoFundMe. Um, and uh, hats off to the Women's Club. That was really amazing. Uh, Belmar Housing Authority, according to Executive uh, Director Paul DeSantis, the main elevator has three to four weeks to go in its repair. Um, and currently the elevator too is successfully being used. Uh, February is a very busy month at the public library. Uh, it, this is the year of the dragon uh, and the Chinese New Year celebration, which is Saturday, February 3rd at 7 p.m. at the Taylor Pavilion. There's gonna be dancing and music. Um, the Ma Young Dance Company of East Brunswick uh, will be there performing and we'll have some uh, food samples from Triple Green Restaurant here in Belmar. Uh, so please register to attend on the library's website. Also, the library celebrates Black History Month with a presentation by Fred Carl, founder of InfoAge Science Center on local American heroes of color defending our nation, where he tells the stories of Belmar region patriotic Americans of color who worked in secrecy in the defense of our nation. And that is Wednesday, February 7th at 5 p.m. at the library. Uh, meet President Ulysses S. Grant and Theodore Roosevelt at Library's Living History Presentations as professional historian actors portray them in character. Um, and this will be in celebration of President's Day. The first one will be February 17th at 11 a.m. And the first time author event will be this Saturday, February 10th. So I guess it's not the Saturday. It will be Saturday, February 10th at 10 a.m. And that's with authors Jennifer Clearwaters and Cynthia O'Connell as they discuss their new book, The Elevation Principles, and how to make sustainable life change one step at a time. Uh, the library is happy to announce the reopening of the lower level. Um, Tarzan media room uh, for the public. Uh, it had water damage prior um, and that's been all taken care of. So we're happy to have that back for workspace, um, study groups, meetings. Uh, please see the library's website for scheduled quiet work and study hours uh, for the week. And then the last thing that I have is thank you to John Walsh for help with the graphics. I did make up a flyer for um, Code Blue and uh, resources that you can call for statewide helpline, which is 211. Um, this is, would help anyone who is facing homelessness um, or who needs shelter, especially during the, the colder um, times. Also, it has information about social service uh, numbers that will actually give you the direct line to the person you need. Uh, and gives a, um, a way to find your nearest food pantry by just texting a number in, um, and that's from Fulfill. So thank you to the residents who really care about um, you know, working to, to help our homeless population, people who are at risk. And thank you to Mayor Council for supporting it. Thank you. 
Um, I went around with to the businesses, the schools, the churches, um, the police station, and the library will have this on hand as well. And I'll update it as, because um, this is winter resources, the warming centers will be different from our spring resources. Thanks. Council President Levis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to announce that the first parade fundraiser in Belmar is happening this Sunday at Miami Grill from 2 to 6. Um, I'd also like to say that Trishore Little League registration is now open. If your children are interested in playing uh, softball or uh, t-ball or baseball, that's, uh, that's the league we all use here. It's a good, it's a good time. We might be coaching softball this year, so we'll see. Um, <laughs> it's a good season. Um, I'd also like to ask uh, uh, Administrator Kane, uh, I know we're rejecting the bids here for, uh, for the marine improvements that we were looking at uh, for the pilings based on the prices coming out being astronomically high. I know we were trying to capitalize on the fact that there was a group already in Neptune doing some work. I just want to know that uh, those pilings will be part of the larger scope uh, again when this does go out to bid again for the bigger marine project, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, because we talked about the next, the top priority is the fuel dock has to be totally replaced. So what we're going to do is take that money that was allocated for these pilings, just move it into that uh, fuel dock, and, and do it all at the same time. Hopefully, this time next year, if we, you know, we need to get everything in place uh, in the spring for the work to be done next year. But uh, what happened is that the company that was in doing the dredging in Neptune. Picked up a bid packet, but never submitted a bid, and it, uh, that had the barge already there. The two that did submit had to bring a float barge <coughs> in from the ocean and just drove the price way up, and we just couldn't couldn't do it with uh, you know the bids are just way higher than the engineer's guess, estimate. That's all. That's all I have there. Okay. Um, Sorry. Can, I, can I just ask about, about the fuel dock again? So the fuel dock won't be completely repaired this summer? Yeah. So, so what happened is the, the middle section, as we know, the middle section of the fuel dock, the, the, the floats gave way and the, and the supports um, were, were gone. So what we had to do was shut down the, the two, the, the pumps to the left side, mm -hmm. the middle and the left yeah. side, and to close that dock off so that so the marine operated basically with, with right. one pump throughout the majority of the summer. So what we've done is we've replaced we've made the repairs to the dock and now what they're doing is uh Maggio Electric is in there do, currently doing the electric work on, on JK and L docks. They're gonna redo the conduit that runs on the fuel dock. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna be able to charge the fuel lines back up. So this summer the fuel dock will be fully operational. Okay. Okay. But the top priority of the marina work going forward is to replace the fuel dock entirely. So this is just a fix now to get the pumps up and running for this season okay. uh, with the idea it's going to be a brand new fuel dock going forward. Great. Thank you. Thanks for that, too. Okay. Um, I attended the library uh, board meeting and, you know, Councilwoman Rondinero stole some of my Sorry. materials, but that's okay. Had, uh, that was a lot. That's okay. But I still have some things to report on. Um, in, ter in terms of the leaders of the board, uh, Sharon Russell Fowler was elected president once again. Michael Shapert was elected vice president. Darlene Havens, treasurer. And Pat Hutchinson, secretary for another year. Uh, sworn in were uh, Casey Cashley and Danielle Arnold. Um, there was some talk about the uh, continuing ongoing reservation of the, of the bathrooms and um, the downstairs space, which now I understand is completed and, and going to be open. Um, new windows for the, for the, uh, the library uh, should be shipped by the end of January. Uh, there was uh, extended discussion on all the different library programs and how they interplay with some of our recreation programs, and you'll get a lot more detail when you see uh, the secretary, Pat Hutchinson's minutes, because I'm terrible at taking minutes. So if you want detail, go to the library site, uh, and you know, the minutes will eventually be up there. Uh, there was a discussion on the strategic plan. Uh, that's a big event coming up for the library, and it was an extended discussion on how, how to uh, get that message out 
to the residents so that all the residents will know and have input into that plan. Um, and oh, there is the, uh, the living history events, which Councilman Ardenero left me a few things that I can talk about here. There's, there's also going to be a, uh, did you mention President Blue Success Grant is coming on Saturday, February 17th at 11. And then uh, President Theodore Roosevelt is coming on uh, Saturday, February 24th. And Harriet Tubman is scheduled for Saturday, March 2nd at 11 a.m. And uh, I think that kind of hits all the high points for the library. Uh, anything else? No? Okay, then we can move on to our consent agenda for resolutions. If anyone from the public would like to speak regarding a resolution listed on the consent agenda, please step forward, state your name and address. I will remind the public, we've, we started the five minute rule at the last meeting, so um, I have my trusty timer here and <coughs> Councilwoman Rondonero will verify that the time is accurate. So, um, as April said, if anyone has a comment, please come up to the mic and state your name and address. Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to close the public session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the resolutions as listed on the consent agenda? The motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilwoman Kinney? Yes. Mayor Bacopesco? Yes. Councilwoman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Okay, next we have first reading and introduction of Ordinance 2024-1. This is a bond ordinance providing for the acquisition of a 2024 ambulance and ancillary equipment appropriating 330000 Do we have a motion to offer this for first reading and introduction? A second? Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman Kinney? Yes, but I actually have a question about this. Can we discuss this for one second or do we all have to vote right now? I just want to know if the um, if the bond is going to be completely on Belmar to pay for or, yeah, because it's, 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 as a shared service agreement, this is something that's going to I, be shared yeah, actually, with. I actually asked that question earlier today. Uh, the way it's going to work is um, Belmar and Manasquan will be paying 35% of the cost, which is $150,500 each. Lake Como and Seagirt uh, will have a cost of $49,500 each. Okay. Uh, because it's such a, a low amount, the bond is, is a formality more than anything else because it's likely that that amount will be paid off towards the end of 2024. So it's not like a 20 year bond or 15 year. They probably won't even have to issue notes for it. So um, that's, because I had the same question. Yeah. Um, but that, it's, it's apportioned amongst all the, uh, all the borough of the towns that are part of the EMS shared yeah, service. Sure. Okay, wonderful. Then yes. Mayor Blanco Yes. Councilman Ramonero? Yes. Councilman Levin? Yes. So now we just have the regular public session. If anyone would like to speak, Please remember to state your name and address when you come up. Good evening, everybody. Linda Sharkis, 4th Avenue. I've missed a couple meetings, so I'd like to get updates on a few things. One is the pavilion. I over it, what was going on in terms of architectural plans and engineering plans. And as of the date that I did my search, there was nothing available. So my question to you, have those plans been completed, and what is the plan to go out for an RFP? Um, the plans have been completed, but for, I think, some technical, uh, I think it's the, the piping and you know, wiring utilities parts of that. But it's, um, and again, I'm, I'm trying to remember from our conversation with Jim Morris, but it's, um, it's, it's there because we want to get it done the plan's done so that we can go out to bid for the uh, someone to actually do the construction. Okay. 
Correct. You, you're correct, Mayor. And, and it's really just just some some utility line work that needs to be rerouted. So they're just uh, adjusting the plans accordingly. Yeah, what, was this, what was the second part of your question? So what I'd like to mention is that since the floor to ceiling doors are being replaced by windows, have you looked at the height of the windows off the floor? Because if you're sitting at a table, I would hope we still have a view. I believe, yes. yeah. Short answer, yes. Yes. So. They're going to be over the. They're going to be level with the with the um, with the railing outside. Is that yeah. what my understanding was? Correct. Okay. This second question is 12th of May. You said mm -hmm. probably a couple meetings ago. Um, had I been here, I would have asked the question because that was the time you were supposed to have an answer. So what is 12th and Main going to be used for? Well, we don't know at this point, but I can answer the question in, in another sense. We are waiting for a, I think it's remedial action, something or another, from the, from the, uh, the LSRP, because we need to uh, remedy the, the um, contamination that is there. And so that's the next step. We're definitely gonna move forward with that. Uh, Everyone wants to see that get done, and at that point, we will be discussing uh, with the public uh, what the pros and cons are of, of utilization of that, of that property. And what is the time frame in which we need to use the $300,000? There is no time frame. There is no time frame. Okay. And my last question is um, kind of bold business. Um, I was wondering, what is the outcome of the review regarding emails in the call log for the dispute with the fire department and Mr. Kane. I don't know. Administrator. That's a, that's a, is it you're referring to the investigation that was asked for yes, by Council by, Levis? By Council, yes. <coughs> I defer to Mayor, Council. Mayor, I, I have uh, concluded um, all the reviews that I need to, con to review and uh, I'll have uh, uh, a report uh, to the mayor and council by the next meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Mayor and Council, Tom Madigan, 604 10th Avenue. And uh, I just wanted to see how um, I could get some information or how to go about getting a resolution to return the beach parking to the pre-pandemic uh, days. Um, uh, I had sent you an email, we've been- Yes, going, I saw that today, yeah, actually. Yeah, we've been going back and forth with this, and I think I had come to a, a council meeting last year, but it was like too late in the season. I thought if it's something that could be, at, at the very least, returned to Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend instead of uh, the beginning of May to the end of September, and um, it's just, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of people are, are counting on, you know, the parking down at, uh, well, down at the, uh, the Mayfair Hotel in Charlotte. So um, I didn't know how to go about that. Well, I think, I, I, I think the, the answer directly to you would be, I do still want to look at the, the overall parking situation there and what effect it might have if we, if we change the dates. Uh, again, I have no vested interest in whether it's, May 1st, May 15th, or May 31st, obviously will affect revenue that we get from that, yeah. but I have yet to really take a look at what, you know, how much of an impact that would be. And so we're definitely gonna take a look at that and some other things that might have to do with the parking situation. <coughs> but if, it, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen well before May 1st. Yeah, I know. I just yeah. I waited last year, right. so I wanted to kind of bring it to your attention. Uh, you will definitely have an answer either way, or some compromise in between on on that. Okay. Yeah. As soon as we can, as soon as possible, as soon as we can all meet and and have that discussion. Okay. Yeah. Pre okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Here we go. Can I have a motion to close the public session and adjourn the meeting? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.